Hello friends, in this video, we are going to see a very popular algorithm which can overcome the limitations of a prior algorithm that is frequent pattern growth algorithm. First, we'll see some shortcoming of a prior algorithm. Using the prior, the needs a generation of a candidate item set. These item set can be large in a number of item set in a database is huge. Apriora needs a multiple scan of a database to check the support of each item set generated and this leads to the high cost. This shortcoming can be overcome using the FB growth algorithm. A frequent pattern growth algorithm. This algorithm is an improvement to the Apriora method. A frequent pattern is generated without the need for the candidate generation. FP growth algorithm represents the database in the form of tree called as a frequent pattern tree or we can say FP tree. This tree structure will maintain the association between the item set. The database is fragmented using one frequent item. This fragmented part is called as a pattern fragment. The item set of this fragmented pattern are analyzed. Thus, with this method, the search for the frequent item set is reduced comparatively. Now we'll see how can we perform the FP tree. Or what is FP tree? The FP tree is a frequent pattern tree, is a like a tree structure that is made with the initial item set of the database. The purpose of the FP tree is to mine the most frequent pattern each node of the FP tree represent in an item of the item set. The root node represent null while the lower node represent the item set. The association of the nodes with the lower node that is the item set with the other item set are maintained while forming the tree. Now we'll see the frequent pattern algorithm stepwise. Let's see the stepwise manner how we perform actually the frequent pattern algorithm. In the first step is to scan the database to find the occurrence of the item set in the database. This step is the same as the first step of a apriora. The count of first item in the database is called as a support count. Or the frequency of a one item set. The second step is to construct the FP tree. For this we create the root of the tree. The root is represented by the null. The third step is to scan the database again and examine the transaction. Examine the first transaction and find out the item set in it. The item set with the max count is taken at the top and the next item set with a lower count and will goes on. It means that the branch of the tree is constructed with a transaction item set in the descending order of count. In a fourth step, the next generation or the transaction in the database is examined. The item sets are ordered in a descending order of a count. If any item set of this transaction is already present in another branch, then this transaction branch would share the common prefix to the root. This means that the common item set is linked to the new node of another item set in this transaction. The fifth step is also the count of the item set is incremented as it occurs in the transaction. Both the common node and a new node count is increased by one as they are created and are linked according to the transactions. The final stage is the next stage is to mine the created FP tree. For this, the lowest node is examined the first along with the links of the lowest node. The lowest node represents the frequency pattern length as a 1. For this, the traverse the path in a FP tree. This path are called as a conditional pattern base. A conditional pattern base is a sub database consisting of a prefix path in a FP tree occurring with the lowest node. 
The seventh step, that is the final step, contains the constructing the FP tree, which is formed by the count of item set in the path, and the item set meeting in the threshold support are considered in the conditional FP tree. A frequent patterns are generated from the conditional FP tree. Now we'll see one by one one of the example of a FP growth algorithm. See, we have given one table where we have a total six transaction and a different L one to I five data set. Then support the threshold we say as a fifty percent and the confidence is sixty percent. So if we say the support threshold is fifty percent, that means the minimum support will be three. Now count each item. First step. Now count each item. When we check the each item, I one comes one. Two, three, four, four times. I two comes one, two, three, four, five times. I three comes one, two, three, four times. I five comes four times and I five comes two times. After done with the counting, in the second step we will sort the item set in a descending order. So after sorting the item set in a descending order, we'll get. This one five four 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 because see see our threshold support threshold is three right so the minimum value is only one that is I five fine but other than that whatever the values are there those are the normal values which are we have to consider so we remove that value and other value we consider and we have ordered it in a descending order after ordering in a descending order using the support count the third step is building the FP tree. Consider the root node as a null. See this tree. Consider the root node as a null. Then the first scan of a transaction T one with the I one, I two, and I three contains three items. That is, I one of one, I two of one, and I three of one. Where I two is linked as a child to root, right? And I one is linked to the I two, and I three is linked to the I one. So I can say I two is linked as a child to the root. Fine, and I one is linked to the I two and I three. I three is linked with the I one. So I'll say I two is linked with the root node. I one is linked with the I two and I three is linked with the I one. So this is done. Now, I transaction two. In a transaction two, I two, I three, and I four contains I two, I three, and I four where. I two is linked to the root that is fixed. I three is linked to the I two. Then I four is linked to the I three, and but this branch would share I two node as a common as it already used in a transaction one. So I two is one of the parent node formation. Then in the next step, increment the count of I two by one, right? And I three is linked as a child to the L two. In I four is linked as a child of a I three. The count of I two is two, I three is one, and I four is one. Now in a transaction four, we get I one, I two, and I four. The sequence will be I two, I one, and I four. I two is already linked to the root node, hence it will be automatically incremented by one. Similarly. I one will be incremented by one as it is already linked with the I two in a T one. Thus, I two is three, I one is two, and I four is one. Now, transaction five, I one, I two, I three, I five. The sequence will be I two, I one, I three, and I five. Thus, I one is four, I one is three, and I three is two, and I five becomes one. In a transaction six, the sequence will be I two, I one, I three, and I four. So the new calculation comes is I two comes five times, I one comes four times, I three comes three times, and I four comes one time. In the fourth step, the mining of a FP tree is summarized. How we summarize it with a tabular manner? The lowest node item set I five will not get considered because it having a minimum support as a one. The next lower node is I four. I four occurs two times branches. That is, I two, I one, I three, I two, I three, I four, 
So before considering the I4 as a suffix, the prefix path will be I2, I1, I3, that is a 1 and I2, I1, that is also 1. So this formation of a condition pattern is base. The condition base pattern is transaction database and FP tree is constructed. This will contain I2 and I3. I1 is not considered as it does not meet the minimum support count. This path will generate all the combination of a frequent pattern. For I3, the prefix path would be I2, I1 which is a 3. I2 will be 1. This will generate the 2 node FP3. I2 is 4. I1 is 3. And frequent patterns are generated. So I2 and I3 will become 4. I1 and I3 will become 3. I2 and I1, I3 becomes 3. So for I1, the prefix path would be I2 with a 4. This will generate a single node with a FP3. And I2 of 4 and the frequent patterns are generated with a I2, I1 with a 4. So we can say, see the item set becomes I4, I3 and I1. For this, the conditional pattern base becomes I1, I2, I3 that is a 1 and I2 and I1 that is a 1. Then in the third item set, it is I2, I1 which is a 3, I2 as a 1, I2 as a 4. Now the conditional frequent tree becomes, now this check, I2 comes twice, right? So I2 becomes twice and I3 comes twice, so I3 become twice. Now in this, I2 comes twice, this comes th thrice and this comes once, so 4 becomes and I1 comes twice, so this becomes 3. And this is a more than threshold value, so we are including it. So similarly, after done with this, we form one frequent pattern generated as I1, I2, I4 as a 2, I3, I4 as a 2, I2, I3 and I4 as a 2. Then I2, I3 will be 4, I1, I3 will be 3, I2, I1 and I3 will be 3 and I2, I1 will be 4. The diagram below will explain you the in detail as Item ID is I2 and I1. So for us the support count is 4 and 3. So the node link will be I3. I2 is I3, comma 1. And I1 is 3. Right? So the advantages of a FP growth algorithm is this algorithm needs to scan the database only twice when compared to the uprira. We scan the transaction for each iteration. The pairing of item set is not done this algorithm and this makes it faster. The database is stored in a compact version and it is efficient and scalable mining method. Disadvantages are FP tree is more cumbersome, difficult to build the uprira. It may be expensive. When the database is large, the algorithm may not fit the shared memory. So in this video, we have seen a very important algorithm that is the FP growth algorithm. And through that, we can perform the different different pattern mining techniques. And through that, we can overcome the Aprera algorithm. Thank you.